Hello, hello. This ship could have sailed today. I almost forgot to do this. So a lot going on this morning. So uh, today is February 17th and I'm reading from 365 Days to Embracing Forbidden Emotions, a daily guide to peace and fulfillment. And I just got the, I wanted to share this. I got the sweetest message from someone who's a re reading the original book, the first book, this one with all my stuff with it. Forbidden Emotions, The Key to Healing, and she said she's reading it, and she feels like for the first time she's understanding her emotions in a way she's never been able to understand them before, and that, I mean, that just gets me because that's my intention because I've felt so confused and judgmental of myself at times throughout my life of my emotions, to, so to hear that someone's reading the first book and is finding a way to feel peace about themselves with their emotions is the whole purpose of writing it. So I'm, I mean, I feel so much emotion getting that. It was just, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> it just, it, it just feels so, I, I'm so happy that um, people are finding that when they read that. So let's go to this book. Hey Beth, I have not seen your name in a while. I hope you are so well. Um, so let's read today. And what did I title this? Always make mistakes. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine being taught that. So February 17th, <clears throat> learning starts with failure. The first failure is the beginning of education. John Hershey. What if I had been taught this idea that mistakes are okay? What if I had been encouraged to always make new mistakes? I would likely be kinder and gentler with myself had I actually been encouraged to believe that what appears to be failure is actually the way I learn. I do learn from my mistakes. I might make the same mistakes over and over again for a while, but this too is part of the learning curve. If I keep making the same mistakes multiple times, I can get down on myself about it, but I likely have patterns of thinking that have been placed for years, even decades. When this is the case, it makes complete sense. There are things I bump up against repeatedly. Each time I do, if I'm aware of it and interrupt the pattern, I get closer to a different result. I may not see much evidence right away because often the shifts in my thinking aren't visible for a while. The work that happens, the work, the work that's happening is on the inside. The more I tap, the more it has a cumulative effect. With consistency, I'll notice the subtle little shifts that are evidence that things are shifting for me. I am working from the inside out. I'm actually changing the expression of my genes each time I do this. The day will come when I will become aware of a significant change in my behavior, but the truth is the consistent little shifts have created what appears to be a big shift. Thought for the day, what if today I can set the intention to notice the little wins I experience? And that's what I would say is, if, as long to me, in my view, as long as we're putting the energy in or making an effort, even just to interrupt, thoughts. It's not like you have to, it's like, whoa, oh, there I am. I catch myself in the act of some thinking. If you, even if you tap for a few minutes to interrupt it and you do that consistently throughout the day, or you use the mental noting, just to, when you catch it to interrupt it, you're not going to catch it at all at first, but then you'll start to catch it. And then when you start to catch it and interrupt it, it's huge. It makes a profound difference over time. But the key is to do something to interrupt the pattern because if you're not doing anything, what you're doing is literally programming the cells for more behavior like that. That's why consistency is queen and interrupting is queen. Is you you learn to do that and go, okay, yeah, this is happening. I might not be able to change anything yet. I can't in fact, but I can interrupt it. And again, it doesn't mean in the moment something's gonna feel like a big shift. You could but you might not at all. But if you're consistent over time, what you're doing is you're helping to change your physiology, helping to reprogram the cells over time to a new way of being. If, you, if we just sit and stew on something, 
then it just stays in place. So that's why when I, when I figured that out, I can't stop my thoughts, but I can interrupt them. Huge difference because I was be, oh, hey, Eddie, I was beating myself up for not being able to stop these thoughts that were going on until I woke up from the nightmare of thinking that I should be able to control and stop my thoughts. I couldn't, it was like, no, but I can interrupt them. That I can do. And, and to know that I can interrupt, it just changed things tremendously for me. And it's always a work in progress as we all are. But you know, that all I did, always make new mistakes. Well, okay, I'm in the game, I'm doing something. I'm not on the sidelines of life. I'm getting out there and I'm at least attempting to do something, you know, to shift it. So, <laughs> hey Eddie. And Beth, I'm so happy to see your name here too. I haven't seen, I don't feel like I've seen your name in a while. So, um, all right, everyone, have a great rest of your day or evening or morning, wherever you are on this fine planet that we all call home together. Bye-bye.